Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wiriawan and today we're gonna talk about 5 best street photography lenses for micro four thirds. Let's go! Before we continue, this is just a quick reminder for you to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you and let's continue with the video. So today I want to talk about 5 best street photography lenses for micro four thirds. But before we get into the lenses, I just want to quickly discuss about street photography from my point of view. Basically, I'm not doing street photography for a living, it's just a hobby for me and I'm doing it just for fun. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean that I don't care about the result of my street photography because I want my pictures to be able to speak to me so that they have meaning and purpose. Basically, in my own interpretation, street photography is basically the act of taking picture of a random stranger or an object on the street or in public area. That by itself for me isn't really meaningful, so I want my street photographs to have a sense of location as well as some human interest elements. In other words, I want the picture not just to look nice but also contains information that will remind me how I feel during that time, how the location looks like to bring me some sense of space and time and so on. That way the photographs will contain not only visual aesthetic that's beautiful to look at but also information as well as emotion. That being said, the choice of gears really matters in this case and there are few simple guidelines that I usually follow for street photography. However, remember that this is my personal opinion and if you have a different taste of gear selection it's okay there's no right there's no wrong first I want my lenses to not be a poke monster all the time when doing street photography because poke doesn't provide me with much information about the surroundings or the environment I want my lenses to give me a sense of location as I mentioned before that being said, I avoid using telephoto lenses most of the time for street photography because of the bokeh as well as the compression of longer focal length. Anything above 50mm in full frame or 25mm in micro four thirds is considered to be telephoto, so for this topic, I will not discuss about them. Also generally, I want my lenses to force me to become creative, not just snapping and getting pictures everywhere randomly, but really forcing myself to take the extra effort so that I can get more creative result. After all, street photography is also about enjoying the process of taking the picture as much as trying to nail the perfect shot. On the other hand, while I really love to use wide angle lenses for street photography because wide angle lenses can really emphasize the environment and surrounding in the whole frame and although I've personally shot some ultra wide angle lenses street photography pictures, I'm not going to recommend them here because using ultra wide angle lenses for street photography is too unusual for most of people's taste. However, this is not a rule at all so you can experiment with it as I did and hopefully you'll also enjoy the result. With that out of the way, now let's talk about the actual lenses. First lens is the Olympus 17mm f1.8, which I don't actually have right now. I personally really like the Olympus 17mm f1.8 because of the image quality, the ease of use, and the overall performance of the lens, but I already sold it. But even though I already sold it, it's still one of the best prime lens that I've ever used personally. The Olympus 17mm f1.8 1.8 is equivalent to about 35 mm in full frame, which is the classic normal wide angle focal length for street photography. It's a wide angle lens, but it's not too wide, so it's a good choice for a first prime for starter photographers. I chose this lens over the newer Olympus 17 mm f1.2 simply because that lens is too big and it's too expensive. I want to emphasize a point which I already talked so many times in my other videos, which is that 
you don't have to spend a ton of money to get great results. And with the Olympus 17mm f1.8, you can definitely achieve that. It is small, sharp, lightweight, it has a pretty large aperture at f1.8, and the focal length is street photography friendly. Anyway, because the lens is considered to be normal wide focal length, you'll get the sense of being there with the subject when you're taking the picture. The locations and the surroundings becomes more apparent when using wide angle lenses like this Olympus 17mm because when you are using longer focal lengths you have a chance to blur that part of the image more. But when you're already familiar with the 17mm f1.8, you'll start to notice what works and what doesn't work with this lens. And you'll be able to create great results using the Olympus 17mm f1.8. Next lens is the Olympus 25mm f1.8 or the Panasonic equivalent of 25mm f1.7. Both the Panasonic 25mm f1.7 or Olympus 25mm f1.8 are great lenses. I happen to own the Olympus 25mm f1.8 but I already sold it. But I'm sure that the Panasonic 25mm f1.7 is as good if not better than the Olympus version. Anyway, these lenses, they are equivalent to about 50mm in full frame which is the classic street photography focal length. Now you might have heard about the Panasonic 25mm f1.4 and the Olympus 25mm f1.2. They are great, I'm sure, but they're, as I told you earlier, big and expensive for street photography. So I don't really recommend them. I'll recommend you to just stick with the Olympus 25mm f1.8 or the Panasonic 25mm f1.7. As with most lenses that I'm going to mention in this video, this lens is small, sharp, lightweight, and has pretty large aperture at f1.8. This lens is definitely a good choice for beginner street photography because 50mm is really easy to use for street photography. It is not considered to be a wide lens, it's more like a normal kind of lens, so it creates a little bit more bokeh than the 7 17mm that I previously mentioned. Now with this kind of lens, you'll be able to create more emphasis for your subject because this kind of lens will be able to create more separation from the environment and the surrounding and the background. And that means it's easier to get great result using the 25mm as opposed to using the 17mm because of the compression and the tendency to create more bokeh. Okay. And also, if you want to keep away from snapping your subject from a close range then the 25 mm is a better choice for you with wider focal length such as the 17 mm you really have to get close to your subject to fill the frame and to really tell a story and that can sometimes become a problem for you especially in public area also as I mentioned earlier the 25 mm will give you that classic street photography kind of look this is because simply a lot of street photographers are using this focal length. However, I personally don't enjoy using tighter focal length for street photography, so I don't really like to use the 25mm lens. I usually prefer to have more information about the surroundings and the environment of the subject, and the 25mm sometimes doesn't always give you that. But I will recommend you to ignore my opinion, just try the 25mm and see if you like it. Excellent. Next lens is my personal favorite, the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7. Without any doubt, this is one of the highest quality prime lens that you can ever get. The build quality, the image result, everything about this lens really deserves its Leica name. It even has its own aperture ring so that you can manually control your aperture from the lens. Speaking of using this lens for street photography, this is actually a slightly unusual choice for street photography because in full frame it is equivalent to 30 mm which is not really the standard choice for street photography focal length. This lens is considered to be a little bit too wide for the classic street photography genre and it requires a lot of effort from you to really make things look nice in the picture. It will require you to really get close to your subject so that the environment and the surrounding of the subject doesn't really stand out too much in the picture. Furthermore, the focal length 30mm of this lens is actually
actually very similar to the 28 mm focal length found on most smartphone cameras. So it's really difficult for you to really make the pictures taken using this lens stand out against the picture taken using smartphone. Well, so far it looks like everything is not well with this lens, but this is actually my favorite lens for street photography. Let me tell you why. Why? One thing is that this lens really forced me to be very creative when taking pictures. What I mean by that is that I really have to think about so many things before I take the shot using this lens. I have to think about the composition, the timing, the feel, the look of the subject. Everything in the picture has to look nice. This is simply because I want the picture taken with this lens to stand out against picture taken using the smartphone which are very similar in terms of focal length. And by putting in extra effort by using this lens for doing street photography, I'm enjoying the process of photography more as much as I'm also enjoying the final result of the picture taken using this lens. Furthermore, because this lens is wide angle in nature, this lens adds more to the elements of surrounding and environment of the subject to the picture. So this lens will not only emphasize the subject itself, but it will also emphasize the surroundings so that you can get a better sense of the location and the feeling that you are there with the subject. And that is what I really like about street photography, feeling like I'm there with the subject, feeling whatever he or she may feel during that exact time and place. As a bonus, if you are traveling with this lens, it will act not only as your street photography lens, but also as a general purpose lens for taking picture of the scenery, for the food, etc. So I can recommend this lens for street photography if you are up for the challenge of using a wide angle lens for street photography. That's it. <laughs> Next lens is the Panasonic 20mm f1.7. This lens is also an unusual choice for street photography because 20mm is an in-between focal length. In full frame, it is equivalent to about 40mm, which is in between 50mm and 35mm. I don't really think a lot of people are using this kind of focal length for street photography because, frankly speaking, it's weird. But what makes it weird is also what makes it really useful. This lens, in my opinion, can be very useful because you can mimic 35mm by stepping back a little bit and mimic 50mm by stepping forward a little bit. And for my shooting style, it is actually very practical. I am trying to become more minimalist every day, so I prefer gear that can have multiple functions as opposed to have many different little lenses that serves only single functions at a time. So if you want a hybrid prime lens that can act as both 35mm and 50mm in full frame, then this lens is for you. It is a pancake lens, which means it is smaller than most regular prime lens. It is small, it is sharp, it is lightweight, and the image quality is as good as the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7. And this is also one of my favorite besides the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 as my street photography lens. The only negative about this lens is that if you are using older Olympus camera body, then the autofocus might be a little bit slow for you because the autofocus system on this lens is actually using an older system. But if you are using newer Panasonic or Olympus camera bodies, then this lens will just work fine on those bodies. That's it. Last but not least is the Panasonic 12-35mm f2.8 or similar lenses like Olympus 12-40mm f2.8. Now this lens will be the only zoom lens that I will ever mention in this video. Now I only happen to own the Panasonic 12-35mm f2.8 but I'm pretty sure that the Olympus 12-40mm f2.8 will be as good if not better than the Panasonic 12-35 and the only differences between those two lenses will be the focal length as well as the stabilization. Now I have to be honest with you, this is actually my most used lens for street photography simply because I feel like I have different prime lenses in just one zoom lens. 
Now using this lens feels almost like cheating in a video game because you can just zoom in and zoom out to change focal lengths and the large aperture of f2.8 while not as large as f1.8 or f1.7 on the other lenses is still large enough and you get great result with this lens. However, being an easy to use lens really takes away all the fun in my opinion. It becomes boring because you can just zoom in and out and you get great result instantly without any effort trying to nail the perfect picture. So lately, I've been trying to apply some self-discipline when using this lens. So I'm pre-visualizing the image in my mind before I take the shot with this lens. Basically, what I will do is I'm trying to pre-visualize the end result of the image that I will take and then I'm trying to analyze the scenery, what kind of focal lengths that will be better to use for that kind of image that I'm thinking in my mind. That way, I can create images that have more impact using a relatively easy lens because I am conceptualizing the image before I even take the shot. So if you are beginning street photography and you don't know which lens to choose yet, especially the primes one, I can recommend to use this lens and see which focal length that you use the most on this lens to figure out the next lens that you will use for your street photography. Also, if you are traveling, I can highly recommend this lens because this lens can do not just street photography, but also general purpose photography, landscape photography, portrait photography, as well for uh, taking picture of general things that you find during your travel. So yeah, I can highly recommend Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 for street photography. <laughs> So that is all for today's video. I hope you find this video to be useful. Please share any comments down below about any experience of using Micro Fortress camera for shooting street photography. Also comment down below your favorite lens to use for street photography. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you and goodbye.